Tesla is reportedly building a massive bunker-style warehouse to house their Dojo supercomputer in Austin, Texas. Here's what it says about the future battles for supremacy in artificial intelligence. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today we're talking about a story that touches a lot of different aspects of the artificial intelligence space, from the AI chip wars, to foundation model supremacy, to real-world AI. And that story is, of course, about Tesla and a report from the information that they're building a new, quote, bunker-like structure to house their Dojo supercomputer. So let's look at the story first, and then let's talk about what some of the interesting implications are. As has been so often the case recently, the story comes from the information first. And the way that they describe this bunker-like structure is as something that could, quote, one day help move the company beyond electric vehicle manufacturing. Continues the information, the Austin Dojo project, details of which haven't been previously reported, reflect an audacious plan by Musk to take greater control over the technology it needs to run the AI software at the heart of his products. So one dimension of this is, of course, just the battle around access to compute and the challenge of AI chips. Like so many other companies, Tesla is dependent on NVIDIA. NVIDIA's chips currently power Tesla's full self-driving software that sits inside Tesla vehicles. And while that works for now, it seems very likely that Tesla's need for compute is going to do nothing but increase as it adds new types of vehicles and even other types of products, one of which we'll get into in a moment, to the set of things that it builds. Even before we get into the Optimus robot, Tesla is making plans to expand its fleet of cars. That includes a robo-taxi as well as a new entry-level Tesla. Now, like other big tech companies, Tesla is also designing its own AI chips. The Dojo supercomputer is going to be powered by Tesla's D1 chips. Now, last month, news outlets from Taiwan reported that Tesla had recently increased its order for the manufacture of these D1 chips by double from TSMC, who's actually doing the fabrication for Tesla. Now, at this point, not a ton is known about the D1 chip. Tesla does have some information on their website about it, and they even have a downloadable technical white paper. But there are a number of benefits that analysts and observers expect Tesla to get from its own chips. One comes from a note from Morgan Stanley, which suggests that the D1 chip will give Tesla a better ability to control how much energy it uses to run AI software. And in that same report, the analysts from Morgan Stanley expect that the D1 may be optimized to process video data faster than with the NVIDIA chips. That would make sense given that the first and most important use case for Tesla is as a part of their full self-driving suite, which has to take in a ton of video data very quickly. Tesla has said that it expects that Dojo will be able to reduce training time for full self-driving workloads from a month down to a week. And overall, Morgan Stanley estimates that the D1 could save Tesla $6.5 billion over the next few years. Now, outside of just cost savings for Tesla itself, Tesla and Musk haven't exactly been cagey about the fact that they want other companies to be able to use their full self-driving technology as well. As Musk said, we're not trying to keep this to ourselves. To the extent that other companies and vehicle manufacturers are licensing Tesla's self-driving system, that would obviously increase the need for compute even farther. Even beyond just full self-driving, Musk has suggested that Dojo could be used to expand access to saleable AI compute services. In April, he told investors, quote, Dojo has the potential to become a sellable service that we would offer to other companies in the same way that Amazon Web Services offers web services, even though it started out as a bookstore. So I really think that, yes, the Dojo potential is very significant. Now, of course, there is a ton going on in this AI chip space. Yesterday, we discussed reports that Microsoft will be debuting their AI chip that has been built under the codename Athena as soon as next month at their annual developers conference. Back in August, Google unveiled the latest version of its Tensor Processing Unit and then had to deal with a number of different news reports that suggested that they were also trying to get away from NVIDIA. And more recently, at the end of September, Amazon announced an investment in Anthropic, which while starting at $1.25 billion, could go all the way up to a $4 billion investment. A big part of that seemed to be collaboration around Amazon's custom AI infrastructure, including their chips. From the Anthropic blog post, AWS will become Anthropic's primary cloud provider for mission-critical workloads, providing our team with access to leading compute infrastructure in the form of AWS Trainium and Infertia chips. Together, we'll combine our respective expertise to collaborate on the development of future Trainium and Infertia technology. And then, of course, just last week, we heard that OpenAI was also exploring making its own chips, and that while the company hadn't made that decision officially yet, they had gone so far as to evaluate a potential acquisition opportunity in the space, suggesting that even if they don't make that decision ultimately, it is a very, very serious consideration. Now, one other bit of actual news from today around the AI chip space is the latest move by AMD to catch up to the distant current leader, NVIDIA. Now, a big part of why NVIDIA has become the default choice over the last decade is not just the quality of their hardware, but also the software that surrounds it. 
It makes sense then that AMD is acquiring an AI software startup to better invest in the software ecosystem around the company's chips. The company that they're acquiring, Node.ai, sells tech to large data center operators and other types of customers to help them deploy AI models that are tuned for AMD's chips. The company will be absorbed into the 1,500-strong engineering group inside AMD that's focusing on software around AMD's chips. Now, of course, the other reason that people are interested in Dojo is the way in which it might be used to power up Tesla Optimus. Optimus is Tesla's humanoid robot that has quietly been making pretty significant advances over the last few months. In an update shared at the end of September, Tesla announced a few advances on the Optimus, including the fact that it's able to calibrate its limbs in the real world, understanding where its arms and legs are in space, and that it can now sort objects autonomously. It has a fully onboard neural network that means that just with the video input in of objects with different colors, it's able to sort them correctly as the desired output. Now, even in this field of robotics, there is intense competition between different companies in the space. In May, various news outlets reported that an open AI-backed robot startup had quote-unquote beaten Tesla to deploy humanoid robots in the real world. That company was called 1X and their robot is called Eve, and in April of this year had been deployed as security guards in two industrial locations. The company said that the robots were going to be deployed in hospices and assisted living facilities next. Now, the big theme, of course, for Tesla and Elon when it comes to AI is this idea of artificial intelligence in the real world. Fully self-driving vehicles, autonomous humanoid robots, and all of it powered by a supercomputer with chips of their own design. When you take a step back and look at it in context, it starts to make Kathy Wood's assessment of the situation make a little bit more sense. Over the next, between now and 2030, we think artificial intelligence is going to add more value than any of our other uh, technology platforms. In fact, it's going to catalyze them. Uh, we talk about uh, Tesla all the time. It actually is the biggest artificial intelligence play, we believe, right now in our portfolios. It is the largest position in our flagship portfolio, ARKK. Why is this? Because Autonomous taxi platforms, uh, we believe, globally, will deliver uh, by 2030 8 to $10 trillion in revenue uh, from almost zero right now. Think about that. 8 to $10 trillion in revenue is almost half of the size of the U.S. economy. We think that's a global autonomous taxi uh, platform opportunity, and we think it's going to submit to natural geographic monopolies. Tesla, mm. certainly in the United States, and perhaps elsewhere. So you're going to be surprised at seeing who's going to... Uh, many people think it's just hardware and software stocks widely advertised, but Tesla, many people think, is an auto stock. We don't. We think it's much more than right that, but we think it's one of the biggest AI opportunities out there. And so all of the pieces of the Tesla and Elon AI story continue to come into view just a little bit more. Next up, maybe we'll get more information about what XAI is up to, but that is where we will leave the story for today. Thanks as always for listening or watching, and until next time, peace.